okay, well, I still have to deliver, right? I can't just say, oh, well, never mind. Predict the size of the boat you need based on how many confirmed guests you have throughout the week. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Work From Home Nomad podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 22 of the Work From Home Nomad podcast. My name is Wilson. I'm your host. Uh, today, I'm joined by Natalie and Jasper. Um, they are my great friends. Um, let's start with a round of introductions. So I'll go first. My name is Wilson. Um, I'm currently in New York City. I've been here for a couple months now. Previously, I was a full-time nomad, having traveled to Europe, South America, where I met Natalie and Jasper in Brazil. Um, hashtag Brazil part one, really. Uh, and prior to... Yeah, prior to South America, I was in San Francisco. Um, but yeah, I've been doing this on and off for the last six years, I want to say. And I'll pass it to Natalie. Hey, I'm Natalie. I am a flight attendant, have been very nomadic, met these guys in Brazil during COVID. Great memories, great times. But uh, I fly out of San Francisco. I have been nomadic for the last four years and kind of coming back to work, making sure I leave the city and travel once a month. But right now I'm basing myself in San Francisco a little longer. Natalie, what do you mean you fly out of San Francisco? I'm based in San Francisco. This is where I start my job. <laughs> You're a flight attendant. I said yeah. that. Did you? I don't think she did. No, Cancel. she did. <laughs> she definitely did. I did not hear her say that. Hit this out. If, if right. anything, I forgot to say what I did professionally. I, I'm in software uh, for anything. Okay. Yeah. No one knows what that really means. Neither do we. Know. Open, open to interpretation. Yeah. I have four cokes, thirty-four thousand feet. So. Oh wow! Who yeah. doesn't love coke at thirty-four thousand feet? It tastes good. <laughs> I'm sure it does. All right, let's let's give it a let's go back. <laughs> but all right, what is it? What are they? They, we we cut it out or something? No, what are they, action. Yeah, oh shit. It's gonna be natural. We're gonna we're gonna run the tape and see that I said I'm a flight attendant. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Okay, action. Yes. All right. So Jasper, would you mind yeah, introducing well, yourself? For sure. My name is Jasper. I'm from Georgia, like near Atlanta, ish, hour and a half. Um. Yeah, I've been nomading for three years now. My nomad anniversary was in August, so like two two months ago, um, or sorry, two years, yeah, two months ago from now. Um, but yeah, I met Natalie and Wilson way back when in Florianopolis in Brazil during my first ever nomad like adventure. Um, super random, uh, but it was it was awesome. And yeah, I've been doing it for a minute now. I used to work in research, and now I do um, software engineering. So um, I stick to the boring stuff because it lets me travel. <laughs> um, yeah, now I'm, I'm, I spend most of my time, like half the year in Rio, uh, in Brazil, but I'm currently in South Africa in Cape Town. So. Ooh. All right, so let's talk about that. Um, where is everybody right now? Um, I'm currently in New York City, and I think over the last six years, this is the longest I've been in one place. Uh, so I've been here since April, and um, <laughs> I'm going to cry, but I'm leaving New York in three days. Um, so that's going to be, what, seven months here in New York City. I'm going to go back to doing a little nomading um, for Brazil. Uh, I'm going to spend New Year's there. I'm going to spend my birthday there. Um, it's such a Sagittarius thing for me to do. But, <laughs> all right, anyways. Um, yeah, go ahead. You're trying to please me with your astrology talk? <laughs> hey, I mean... I just do it. Oops. He's literally spraying and praying. He has no idea what Sagittarius means. Oh, I love it. <laughs> spraying and praying. All right. Uh, what about you, Natalie? Where are you right now? You said San Francisco. What brings you to San Francisco? So I have my own place, and I finally live somewhere after four years of really oh. not living anywhere. So She's not a nomad anymore. Why did you invite her on our, on our show? <laughs> 
Well, the long-term vision is to convince you two to start a co-podcast with me or to start a group podcast with me. So we'll get to that in a second, but. So much banter. That will be fun. But uh, no, I'm, I still am a nomad. I like date someone in France and I travel a lot. I'm going to have to travel for a second, but just, you know, this is like a little pause. Wilson's been in New York for seven fucking months. Can I say yeah. fuck? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, is that on the banned list? No. Yeah, you can say fuck. <laughs> yeah. So, Jasper, what brings you to Cape Town? So I was here like a month ago in September for a couple of weeks because I waited too long. I was in Victoria Falls and I waited too long to buy my ticket to Brazil because I knew I was... I literally jumped out of a closet to surprise my friend in Brazil and it was this whole surprise thing. But it was freaking hilarious like he almost had a heart attack like he literally came home from work like just totally like you know just apathetic no idea what was going on exhausted and i literally jumped out of his closet with like a full secret camera and everything it was it was awesome but well i did get footage i i did get footage uh, it's it was it was amazing um and then yeah but like so I was supposed to go there right after Victoria Falls, but the tickets were insane because I was doing this whole go with the flow thing and they were too expensive. So I needed somewhere to kill two weeks. So I was like, oh, Cape Town's there. I haven't been there in ages. And so I, I booked the ticket and it was really rainy, uh, kind of quiet. Um, so I feel like I just wanted to give it another go. I didn't really spend as much time here as I wanted. There was also a little boy drama involved. I met a cute guy I wanted to see again. But I actually really wanted to experience Cape Town again. And the weather is amazing now, like a billion times better than it was was before. So yeah, I'm I'm glad I'm here. Um I don't I I'll leave in another two weeks to go back to South America to, to Patagonia. Um yeah, Cape Town's a cool city. It's kinda like if Sydney and Rio had a baby. Yo. Wow. Something like that. Yeah, that's how I would describe it. But that's romantic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here's the thing I was telling you guys like two days ago, but I love following y'all on find my friends because literally I would see Jasper in Sao Paulo airport. And then Natalie was in Costa Rica. Next day I open up, find my friends. Natalie's in San Francisco. Jasper's in Cape town. It's like, what the hell? But Keep so going to I know. if we get human trafficked you would have no idea you just oh yeah they're supposed to be in cambodia right now oh yeah why wouldn't they be in, in antarctica like, <laughs> yeah how many people do you guys follow on find my friends i wouldn't like, say like me oh god okay i won't even say it now because jasper is gonna make me he looks super I feel like unpopular the Pokemon, it's different <laughs> <laughs> it's become a hobby for me you know i think it's like 10 to 15. People, and i'm like let's follow each other but it's really fun when they're flight attendants oh, oh yeah and then you're at a hotel and you're like i don't know anyone here and then and then you're like oh what's her face is here we're going out for drinks so yeah so nice although you guys do this all the time in new york and wilson's not a flight attendant somehow people whoever's listening these two like they managed to meet once a month in some random city all over the world and get a super fancy dinner without me, even though we're supposed to be like a thruple here. <laughs> and like, we've never had this. Actually, the only time it's ever happened was one when we met in Florianopolis. I don't think we had any fancy dinners. We had one sushi place. But then in New York a couple months ago. And that was only because it was in New York. That, you, in their really? New York. I just didn't mean it's true. From our pizza, pizza, pizza dinner You're with, like, uh, <laughs> with PG. What's her face? Are we allowed to mention PG? Wait, is it on the ban list? No, no, we can say PG. <laughs> if people don't know, yeah. they have to follow our. Yeah, oh, I like that. Oh, now you're reeling in the audience. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so PG is basically um, my ex Brazilian girlfriend. Um, but yeah, that's uh, it's a juicy topic for another day. <laughs> Rest in peace, PG. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about how everybody got into traveling and nomading. Why do we love it so much? Because, um, I mean, it, let me give some perspective. Because, hey, I'm in New York City. I have friends here. None of them are nomads. And whenever I was describing my situation to them, it, I, I can't tell you how many times I've had to explain it. But I'm leaving New York 
on Sunday and I'm going to be gone for like three months and I'm going to come back. They're like, wait, how do you do that? Why do you do that? Why would you do that? I'm like off the hook my place. I'm not paying any rent for three months. This is amazing. But everybody was just genuinely confused by that lifestyle choice. Uh, so I don't know. For me, I've just gotten really used to it. I love it. I think it's just really fun. It gives you a lot of mobility. It gives you a lot of flexibility. I don't have to pay double rent, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe I'll start with Jasper. Uh, how did you get into it? You were just talking about Cape Town, Brazil, Cape Town. How do you do that? And why do you like it so much? Yeah, I mean, I've never liked the US much in general. I, I knew I wanted to like travel and work. It just it wasn't as much of a thing until COVID hit, right? And then everyone was forced to. And I was living in San Francisco with like 10 people because the rent's so expensive there, you know? And it was like, I think my, my work, my, my boss felt really bad for me being stuck with 10 people in this tiny house during the pandemic. San Francisco was also super strict, right? During all of that. So they, they let me, they let me go to Mexico for a couple of weeks. And then I was like, Oh, can I stay a couple of weeks longer? Um, they're like, yeah, sure. Oh, can I stay a couple of weeks longer? Yeah, sure. Oh, can I go to Brazil for a month? Yeah, sure. Can I go for Brazil for three months? Yeah, sure. And it just kept escalating and escalating. So I wasn't even asking for permission anymore. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I don't know. I really love it. I mean, I think what first draws you in is like, Oh, you know, you could live in a different place and like, it's just very new, like, oh, there's beaches. Oh, you know, there's, you're meeting really like beautiful people in all these different cities. Like you're, you're, you're like, uh, the, the, the quality of the people you meet is really high because you're meeting other people who are like very adventurous and cool and all these things really draw Thank you. you. Draw you Thank you. First. Yeah. You three, you two, especially like case in point. Um, and, and I don't know, you just sort of get high off it. You feel like you're living a very, like, for me, I feel like my life is much more intentional. Like, and I know that sounds very like eat, pray, love, but I mean, honestly, like when your environment is changing 24 seven, you have to be in the moment. You have to be present. Like you have, in some ways you're like still planning for future trips, but like, you know, like today I woke up, I was like, I have X, Y, Z, I need to get done. And I was just totally in the moment because when you're in the same place all the time at home, you just, you really go on autopilot, you know? So that's one thing. And then also like the, the like currency conversion thing is a huge deal. Like as Americans, we all have artificially like, you know, inflated strong like currency, like the US dollar. And on our salaries, if you were to live the way we live when we're abroad, we would be in like mountains of debt, you know? But you can live really well abroad when like you have you're making your earning in USD and like life is just better when you're when you feel richer, you know, even if you have no right to be. And I know that's sort of controversial to say, but it's so true. Like it's it's really nice I can afford this beautiful place in Cape Town right now. If I were to do this in San Diego, it would be like I don't know. It would be like a million dollars an hour. Stay there. For days. If that, I mean, I don't even think three days would cover it. So I don't know. There's there's a lot of benefits, but like I really like the growth it offers. I like the cool people I meet. Um and yeah, also, America's just kind of boring also. I mean, <laughs> I, I have some American friends and I know it's a spicy take, but like every, you need a car for everything and the parties aren't as great as they are abroad. And, you know, there's some nice nature, but it's like out in the middle of nowhere. If you go outside in Rio and you walk five minutes, you're the most beautiful beach ever. So I don't know. For me, there's a million reasons and I don't plan to stop anytime soon, but it would be nice to have a base sort of like you guys have because it also gets exhausting. Let's be real. We, we all we all like a spicy taste. Um, do, spicy do you have taste. any spi oh, sorry. <laughs> spicy take? I'm yes. Well. <laughs> what about you, Natalie? Do you have any spicy takes uh, on the traveling nomading? Do you agree, disagree with Jasper and everything you just said? What do you think? With everything. And personally, Ooh. I don't really love routine. It like bores me. I, if I'm in one place for too long, I start getting super antsy and I feel like I've seen it all. Damn. I love Francisco and it's absolutely beautiful. I was born and raised here. It is different than what it used to be. And Apocalyptic. I love like what I get for my money when I go to other places. So like to play off of what you said, like I can go out to eat wherever I, we went to like a, one of the best restaurants in all of Brazil and that was pretty affordable. Yeah. And we lived for pretty much nothing daily, you know, and like the quality of life and for what you pay for it is so much better. When I go to France, even, even Paris, you know, like expensive, but 
there's a lot of ways to make it not expensive. And yeah, yeah, I mean, before I became a flight attendant, I was working in retail and for different skincare brands. And I remember I just want to save money to travel. And it was like, in that industry, you would save for fucking ever and not make enough to travel well. Like tickets are expensive, you guys know. So for me, I always wanted to be in aviation because I want the benefits of free or cheap travel. Now, now I get those perks and I can pretty much go anywhere. And mean in my job because I can be like, mm, I've been to New York like three times this month. I'm going to go to Maui. Or, you know, I went to Costa Rica for the first time a few days ago. So Natalie, have a to day. me, you're the truest nomad because you actually, like, you're literally, even in your off time, you're traveling. Like you're every day of the week, you're like doing something in another city. For me, I think this is, I, I, I see that and I think, wow, she's so impressive. I would be exhausted. And, I, and then I understand how people see me doing my like country hopping every month or every two weeks. Like you it's- cross- oceans every couple of weeks yeah no i i think that you would be exhausted too but like it is exhausting right you always have to it's pack really tiring oh God, i have to i'm going into like two different temperatures so yeah like, exactly like yeah you you sometimes you're like you know what instead of going here for like six days i have to just book somewhere for like two months because i i need a recharge i feel like we all get to that point yeah. yeah, little things like you don't even think about like slow. what? What'd you say? Slow nomading. Everyone yeah, slow matting. Yeah, <laughs> that's what the hipsters are calling it. <laughs> but you need it because like every little thing, just like I also don't like routine, but like it being not on autopilot all the time, I think it makes us smarter and more adaptable people. But it also like can get really tiring. Like when I land in a new place, there's so many things that. You have to think about like, oh, where am I going to get groceries? You don't know. Sometimes you don't know what any of the food means at the grocery store because it's all in a foreign language. Sometimes you don't know how to make anything with it because the grocery items people use in different countries are different. You know, you have to find a gym. The gym doesn't have all the equipment you're used to. Like you have to find a place to do laundry. Like you have to read the laundry machine because the laundry machine's in another language. Like there's just there's so many little things. And if if you're just like constantly switching places, it, it does get like it can be like much more of a chore than like. A... I mean, so- like. That no matters or no matters are like adaptable people. Like you could yeah, be friends true. with you can be like, okay, this food is different and I'm going to try it and like I want to try different things. Like I love people like that who like open who are open to like not just their culture. Cause like the world is pretty big. Try yeah. new things. You know? Oh, go you're so worldly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wanted to double click a little bit on a couple of the topics that we just mentioned. Number one, the uh, the U.S. dollar goes a long way outside the U.S. And I've said this a lot recently with my other friends, but it's more expensive for me to be stationary here in New York City than it is to nomad from place to place, uh, which... It's kind of crazy because like Wild. whenever you think travel, you think, oh, that's really expensive. You're buying flights, you're buying Airbnbs, hotels, whatnot. But it's actually really, really expensive here in New York City. And so that should really tell you how much I like New York. Um, and I guess like another thing to Natalie's point, which is I I do really like that part of traveling. It's um, just understanding different cultures being really open-minded to different foods. Uh, and then Jasper's uh, examples with, oh, you have to like do laundry, like the gyms you're not used to. I kind of find that exciting. Um, I've found that a little less exciting as I've gotten older. I don't know, like whenever I was in my early 20s, I could do that hostile shit. I can't do that shit anymore. Like I need my own space. Uh, I probably need my own bathroom maybe-ish sometimes. If I don't have my own bathroom i'm sharing it with one or two other people max but um yeah that's yeah. uh that's pretty interesting your standards yeah. definitely like you need more right to like to to be content like i i i mean i i make a lot more with my new job than my old job that i quit like almost two years ago now 
And that plays a part of it because my salary is much higher. Yeah, it snaps for me. I was proud of myself. But like, uh, <laughs> sexy snaps. Um, but like, a part of it also is just you get, you get exhausted. Like, I tried staying in a hostel in, when I was in Norway this summer, or sorry, in Sweden, because I needed to save money because it's freaking expensive there. And I was just, I was absolutely exhausted after one day. I feel like when people think travel, like, oh, you're nomading and you're traveling, like, you definitely, like, I think need a certain amount of income to like be able to do it without going crazy because so many random things end up costing a lot of money you need a space where like you can like it can be just a room in someone's house but it needs to be nice you know because if you're constantly just like like bumming it it's who who has the energy for that you know like Dream. hostels are so last year for me so last three years for me I'm, i just can't anymore so last you, week you know what? it's a nice place to hostel it's the only place i would do it is Selena. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we Selena. Selena, yeah. I've never stayed there, but it is really nice. But They're the bougie. little pod hostels in Japan are so cozy. Mm, okay. Yeah, nice. Maybe? The capsule hotel. I've been in one in Indonesia and it smelled terrible inside because I don't think they could wash it inside. That's my theory. Human so maybe? I wanted it again. No, Japan is like. You know, Tokyo is kind of expensive and I'm on a flight attendant salary, so I'm a little bit different. So when I went there, we stayed in a capsule hotel and it was so, we, I think about that sleep. It was nice. I would do that again. But you yeah. weren't working from there, right? You didn't need like a, like a table for your laptop and like a quiet place for calls. I think it makes a difference when you're like working. I guess. No, they had, they had a little working, they had like a little cafe that people would go and work at. It was very clean and cute okay japan 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 yeah talk about being a hard place to do grocery shopping <laughs> oh yeah With the language. And, it's, yeah. and uh i think i you guys just mentioned a couple of different places japan sweden um brings to my next topic which is what's been your favorite place uh what's been your favorite memory while traveling do we have an answer in mind? If not, I can start. Wilson. All right, I'll start. <laughs> okay, That's so such a hard question. Like, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I, the reason why I ask is because I get this question all the time. So then I have been conditioned to think about it, summarize yeah. it, deliver. Um, right. So I'm going to change the question a little bit because I asked the question and I'm the host, so I have all the power to do that. Um, I. I would say my top three, um, definitely Brazil. And I think like a lot of people, uh, <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm laughing because it's you two, but um, I really Wait, like bro, Brazil. It's a country or a memory? I thought it was a specific memory. Well, place plus memory, I guess. I, oh, okay, okay, yeah. all right. Okay. okay, so favorite place I think would be Brazil. Um, I remember I did my Mexico stint, I was like, trying to learn Spanish, hustling, um, going to Colombia, Peru, et cetera, staying in South America or this side of the world uh, for time zone purposes for work because my work is very meetings heavy. Uh, and then when COVID hit, I was like, okay, let's go somewhere far um, because I'm not going to go on client on sites for a while. So that's whenever I went to Brazil and it turned out to be like, just it blew my mind. I stayed there for six months plus uh, during COVID. That's wherever I met you, Jasper and Natalie. Uh, and then I accidentally learned Portuguese. Um, <laughs> <be like that. laughs> uh, and I think, um, number two would probably be Turkey. Number three is New Zealand for me. Uh, yeah, New Zealand, um, favorite memory while traveling. Uh, fuck. I actually I didn't have this one in mind, but maybe one of my favorite memories was hiking Patagonia, um, in Chile with uh, my homies. Shout out to Emma, Naomi, and Lucy. Uh, we hiked together, W Trek. It's w one Trek. of the best weeks of my life. Yeah, that's the been w two Trek. weeks with my dad, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so Sweet. what about you, Natalie? Okay, this is hard, dude. Yeah, um, yeah. Do places first. It all was special because we all met in the beginning of like our own Brazil trips, right? And yeah. we all kind of covered so much different ground when we were there. Like we didn't just stay in Florianopolis. We, we 
all like saw different parts of Brazil. Jasper was taking weekend trips to like fucking <laughs> crazy out of the Chapada dos Viaderos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Watch. Um but it's cool because Brazil is such a big country and I feel like the six months that I was there, I saw like so much of it. And I really got, you know, I'm half Brazilian, but I got a grasp of like how different every part of Brazil actually is. And I had like little mini lives. It was a good time. But when I became a flight attendant, I set up like the first year I set up a solo trip to Bali. And I really love the feeling of being somewhere for the first time and like virgin eyes, you know, like it's mm. the best. And although I've been many places for the first time since then, obviously, that was like my first solo trip. And it was like a hard place to get to really far. And I just got all my benefits. It was like I was like a little newbie doing it. So that sticks out as like a special trip for me personally. Nice. Um, Jasper? Yeah. I hated Bali. Not that anyone asked for my opinion. <laughs> I talk to. You need to redo it. I do need to redo it. I definitely need to redo it. I should have gone with you. I, I feel like I would have loved it. Um, okay, top three. Easily number one is Brazil. Like, that's almost like my new home now. Like, I love Rio. I love meeting you guys in Florianopolis. The people there are amazing. The nature is amazing. I just could go on and on and on. I really think Rio especially is like the best city on a planet by a mile. Like, especially if you need nature. We also need like to be chaotic and have fun and party. Like it, it has both. All jazz. Um, yeah, exactly. All Nature Wilson. And chaos. <laughs> You're one of these guys for chaos. Go for it. Um, probably number two. I wasn't doing this job. This was after college, but I worked in Australia for a year, and I really, really liked it there. I had a solid friend group. Um, also a lot of nature there. Good parties. Um, I was making more money as a waiter in Australia than I was as a consultant in San Francisco. So like, let that sink in a little bit. Like, that's crazy how high the salaries are for like, you know, unskilled labor or whatever. Um, so yeah, Australia is number two. And then number three, I like, I really, really loved uh, Namibia. I wasn't working while I was there, like remotely, but I was just like vacationing for 10 days. And it was just like such a beautiful, underrated place. Um, like insane scenery everywhere. Also really safe and easy to get around, like not these you know, stereotypical thoughts a lot of people have of Africa. So it was cool. Um, and then, yeah, favorite memory. I don't know. I feel like uh, I'm going to name two. So I had one in um, Australia. We, my friends and I booked a campsite in the middle of nowhere. I was super skeptical, but we did shrooms and like we watched, like we did shrooms in the morning and had some champagne and like the whole day was just beautiful like it was the most i was laughing so hard like it was just one of the most aesthetically beautiful and like emotionally beautiful days of my life it was perfect I love that. it was so good like it was it was so good it really like i'm gonna remember every moment of it and then like be, and we were still feeling a little the shrooms a little bit at the end of the night and like i remember the stars were dancing while we were trying to make dinner it was just like it was crazy and then um yeah and then the other memory is probably like uh some friends and i went to this um this 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 festival in brazil and it was my favorite artist and i was with all my friends and again we were doing some non-sober things and just like all the different things at once and at the end she played my favorite song ever like the end of the festival and there were several artists that i really loved were at this festival um, who were the and artists was, and what non-sober uh, things were you doing <laughs> i'll answer the first question i won't answer the second question um it was vintage culture who's a brazilian dj who i love and Talking Sophie Tucker, and at the end they did this little like co-DJ thing together, like out of nothing. It was just, no, it was so much fun. And all my friends were there. This was in Bahia? This was in Rio. Oh. This was in Rio, yeah. On Carnival this year, the first day of Carnival, so. Wow. Yeah, hectic, been hectic been start. Been Carnival. You've never been to Carnival? Oh. Natalie. To get there during that time, and I don't want to buy a full fare ticket. <laughs> It's also Tickets like, are expensive, yeah, during that time. I Brazil, definitely see it. Brazil's kind of wild. Always. Yeah. Especially like from the West Coast. Carnival. It's very, like, chaotic and, like, hot, sweaty people. No one's sober. You're very, like, peaceful and balanced and, like... But I've been to Rio during New Year's, and it was... Oh, really okay. Cool. Similar it, energy, yeah. It was sweaty and dancey, and, you know, it's fun to do that sometimes, but... I'll yeah. go to one day with you guys. It'll happen. I'm down. Yeah. I'm down. 
Um, can I just say that I really appreciate that story, Jasper, um, like the stars and was it Namibia um, that you were there? Uh, I think I, one of the goals with this podcast for me and also my tr travel blog is whenever I grow older, I want to review all this content and just like remember how much fun I had. And I, I really liked your story because I feel like those are those are the types of stories you want to like keep up with and make sure that you remember whenever you grow old. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> so sweet. Um, next. So I have, let's switch gears to everybody's favorite topic, which is international love. <laughs> so the, the three of us, let, let's level set real quick. The three of us are American, born and raised American. Um, while traveling abroad, like, you know, as single people, you're going to find love. Like it's, it's just going to naturally happen. If you're as charming as the three of us are, you're going to find love. <laughs> So, uh, with that start, with that introduction to this topic, um, who would like to start? Let Natalie start. She has the man's right now, so. So Natalie is actually Natalie's not the only one who's not single. On oh, sorry, okay, well maybe I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe you can what? speak for yourself. You, you cut out. For you're a the second. only one. You're the only one who's not single. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. She has a French, a Parisian lover. He, well, he's from Bordeaux, but he lives in Paris. And yeah. I literally wanted to date outside of the U.S. So I, two years ago, I took all my vacation in September, and also made sure I had half of October off, no work. And I went on a solo trip to Italy and France. And I told my friends like, I'm doing this solo. If anyone wants to meet up for like little stints, we can like hang out together. But like, I'm going on Bumble and I'm going on dates with guys. Like that's- She was on the hunt. Oh my God, I didn't know this. I also talked to an astrologer. Oh yeah. Maybe this person. And they were like, yeah, you're not gonna- Wait, 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 wait. Your astrologer what? told you to do this? Pretty much. Two, what? Two they were like, your person isn't American and you're going to meet this person traveling. So How did you know they weren't in Congo or something like this? How did you know they were in Italy? I didn't really know that they were in Italy or France. That's just where I wanted to go. Where you wanted to go. Okay. She know, manifested it. I didn't know it was going to happen at this time. I just felt like, you know, there's moments where you feel like hot shit. And like, there's moments where you're like, your confidence is a little higher. So I was like, I'm going to go to Europe. And I'm going to get on Bumble and go on dates and it could be nothing or it could be something, but I don't really care. I'm just going to free dinner. And you know what? When you <laughs> date abroad, you get the best tour guides. True. Oh my God. True. In my experience, they're like, let me walk you around the neighborhood, blah, 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 blah. They just walk around and talk about how like they love their city and like what this building is and what kind of meal you should get because it's of the region. And like, it's a really fun experience. So anyways, I did it through Italy, did it through France. And at the very end of my trip, I met my now boyfriend, G, and he is the most lovely person. And I go back and forth uh, visiting him. And I love going to France. It's also one of my favorite places. I want to live there. And he's coming here in January for the first time. Really? What? Spicy. Yeah, well, I'm going to take him to New York first, then here. I think I'm gonna bring him on a work trip to Hawaii. We're gonna a go to work trip. Yeah, you know, 24 hours, free hotel. Oh, that's okay. spicy. Yeah. That is spicy. That's fun. Oh my God, he hit the jackpot. I just did, both of us, works out. <laughs> oh, good answer. <laughs> is he on oh, your okay. buddy pass yet? He's he will be next year. He will be, starting that's January. Here. That's coming in. Mm -hmm. I can't I believe I had, I'm, I joke. I'm like, you're doing this for the benefits. <laughs> I like, I like that humor. And he's like, no. I'm like, just go with it. It's funny. I had dinner with you last week, Natalie, seven days ago. Wow, I can't believe this week flew by. But you were telling me about how you guys were together and not together, and then together again. And I just, I, I mean, from what it sounds like, G is an outstanding man. I can't wait to meet him. Sounds like a, 
a gentleman, classy guy. And um, speaking of gentlemen, Jasper. <laughs> what oh, great. I love <laughs> That's why they call me the moderator, right? Um, what's, it, what's it like dating a non-American? What are your experiences like? Positive, negative? Uh, any, anything to share there? Yeah, I mean, so my experience, yeah, I mean, I've never really, there's been Americans I've dated that I, I've liked. I had an ex who was American for like, like a, a year we were together. Like, I think um, they can be good. I just think it's very rare. And, you know, I like, I'm only interested in like boyfriends and husbands. I don't want a girlfriend or a wife. I hope my grandma does not see this. She has no idea. And so like, I... For me, I have to think statistically like, wow, if I meet a hundred American guys and I maybe I like one of them, maybe um, that's not a good ratio, you know, for me, because already only less than 10 percent of the population of the male population is even into guys. So I've I, I my first like um, like international boyfriend was I actually met him here in Cape Town. He, he was German. And I was like, wow, I love this. Like, he's very down to earth. He's very like, he like, isn't like just drinking all the time because Americans like are obsessed with just like alcohol 24 seven and it just gets, gets old and you get over and you feel awful. And um, I was like, wow, it's, this is awesome. Like, and I kind of like the, the language barrier sometimes too, because in English I can be like a little like on the spectrum sometimes and it's hard for me to communicate verbally. So it's really nice for me when I'm like almost on the same level as like the other guy or like he's, he's a little below or whatever. So I, I really loved it. And I find like, um like guys in other countries they're not all great i mean there's plenty of like douchebags and, and and unattractive people who are not from the u.s but i've really had fun with it and i've had like some of my craziest memories have been from like <laughs> tinder dates that have just gone crazy or like um like you know like like guys i've been dating in different countries so um yeah I, i've dated a i've had a german boyfriend and a venezuelan boyfriend so far so let's i see very spicy very different uh cultures you know like um very different vibes but it was awesome yeah i don't know how i could summarize all this for my point of view but i mean y'all know uh i dated the brazilian for like two two and a half years on and off um that was an interesting experience because the first time i met her she was basically like so when are we going to get married um like very very affectionate uh very flirty very lighthearted. um and then whenever i would have like whenever i would post pictures of myself and my mother uh brazilians would be like oh is that my mother-in-law and it's super straightforward in american culture so i think i had to really adapt to that while i was in brazil <laughs> um and i've kind of taken that with me a little bit in my just general dating and I have to use it sparingly because it's obviously a different culture. So whenever the uh, time is appropriate, you know, you may as well just like drop that line. Um, and it, as long as it's like delivered smoothly and you know, not too strong, I, I think like actually it, it's very well received. So I feel like just dating um, while I was in Brazil has like kind of, made me realize that I'm like, okay, being more affectionate is good. My love language is words of affirmation. Uh, whenever people say like compliment um, attributes, I kind of like it. So it's a, it's, it's just international love. I don't think I would say that I would never date an American. Um, but I will say that I think from my experiences, it's really shaped the way that I approach dating. Um, and like, I think a better way. Yeah. It also makes you more like, I think better. Like if, if everyone who wasn't American right now just disappeared in the thin air and you knew you had to date an American, I think like our experiences dating abroad have give us more like empathy. We're a bit more open-minded because we've had to date people from other cultures. And I think it makes you more able to date people with different personalities. Like you don't always assume you, cause when you're dating someone, you know, who's from a different background than you, you assume less, you make less expectations. You like, it's you go go with the flow more and i think if i were to date an american now it would be i would be a much like better partner than i than i would have been before i've had these experiences like dating people with i agree 
So everyone should date abroad for at least a moment because it teaches you lessons to you. A couple moments. I mean, it's fun. It is so fun having like international dates and like meeting your partner in some other city and like that neither of you live in and just exploring it and like doing whatever. Like it's yeah. so interesting, like different, you know, different places in the different culture. Like, like you said, Wilson, like Brazilians are so passionate and bold. They like, if they want something, you will know it. And it will not take long for you to figure it out, you know? Right. Like, they will go up to you and just kiss you. Like, that's how Brazilians are. Like, if you're at a party, you're going to get kissed by maybe... I love it, yeah. <laughs> like in Speak France... Speak for yourself. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but like, in, in France, people are so... It's different, too. It's different than here. It's different than Brazil. Like, the romance is, like, so heightened. It is very affectionate and lovey dovey. And then, like, and France, yeah. Really? Oh, I would not. And, like, Paris. I've heard that, yeah. Oh my God. It's I would not have guessed that. It's so romantic. Like, like get- Paris, Eiffel Tower is like the sexiest city. Like, there's a reason. French people <laughs> are just like, so, like, I don't know. They want to whine and dine and they want to, like, hold hands and they want to show affection and they're very, like, and then Italians in- are like that too, yeah. Italians are aggressive. <laughs> Hot take. I do not mean that as in a bad way. I absolutely love it personally. I don't think it's for like the weak of heart. Like if you're like some shy girl that doesn't really like when you know like any a sort of a like aggressive compliment or something, like don't go to Italy. Um, but if you like that, like I could be, I could vibe with that. Whatever, can't call me. I don't care. <laughs> that call me i don't care quote of the month should be the name of the the podcast <laughs> yeah i okay so here i mean my recruiting and sales pitch to you two is that hey we should start a podcast together the three of us we like each other we have great chemistry we're funny people we live eccentric yet fun and different lives and people love that shit. Like, why not, right? And so I think our the name of our podcast is going to be the first step. Um, cat call me, I don't care. Like that that's definitely a candidate, right? Like I'm so pretty- into that. But let's see what else comes. <laughs> we we split the equity three ways. I think it yeah. might be confusing for people. They're gonna call, <laughs> call me, I don't care, and be like, we're just gonna keep on going. Like, let's see what else is. You don't want to spook them. Name of the first episode. I mean, I, I think there were, uh, I should have written this written this down, but there was something that Jasper said like 20 minutes ago that I was like, oh my God, that could be a really great topic for a podcast episode, but probably not the first one. Um, but, oh, maybe like uh, maybe working from Africa. That could be a really cool topic. People would love that. Um, anyways. Yeah, an adventure. The amount of calls I've taken on tuk-tuks and like, I don't know, like there's like, there's been so much chaos. Every time I go, <laughs> always yeah. worth it. Always worth yeah. it. And then a question that I get all the time from my non nomadic or friends who don't work and travel as much as we do um, is Has anything bad ever happened to you while you were traveling? Like, have you ever been robbed? Have you ever been um, attacked? And my answer is yes, but one time I was in Guadalajara in, in Mexico. Um, and it was like a really breezy day. Uh, I was in Guadalajara for like a year, but it was, I was in an Uber windows were down. We were stuck in one way traffic. Some guy snatched my phone on a motorcycle, like just drove off. Um, but like literally that's the only time I've ever been robbed or anything. Um, and I was in Guadalajara for an entire year that could happen to me. San Francisco could happen to me in New York city. Um, I was just not careful in the moment. And I think like I've, I've, I've raised the air in Brazil for nearly a year. Didn't get robbed once. And I think it's just because I was super careful. I do think Rio is pretty dangerous, but you can't not visit Rio. Um, so every time I'm in Rio, yeah, I, I, just pay attention, like be very vigilant. You'll be fine. I mean, I, I would also say, though, like, the U.S. does not feel super safe to me all the time. Like, I was living in San Same. Francisco before I started nomading, and I had three different incidents of, like, people attacking me or, like, uh, yeah, attacking, like, three different times. Like, because, I don't know, there's a lot of 
people on drugs there, people not thinking clearly, but also the city is just tense because you have all these people without jobs who got out of the tech market and there's no tax dollars going to help them. So it's like, it's a, it's a very tense city, you know, and my city, Atlanta is not very safe either. Um, I'm really it's Jasper cutting off. No, cutting off. wait, Jasper cut off, right? It's not me. No, it, he cut off. Okay. okay you, hear me? you cut now, off. Now we can. Yeah. What is What was the last thing I said? Uh, oh, I don't know. But <laughs> you're uh, action. You're, I was. Oh, wait, I was, wait, you're talking about San Francisco. Like you've been attacked three times. Okay, okay yeah. So yeah, I've been attacked. Like so, I mean, San Francisco is pretty dangerous. I think. Like, and that was even before. Like, I've heard. I heard it's worse now. Like, I've been. I have three different incidents with people like attacking me for whatever reason. My home city, Atlanta, not not very safe either. Especially if you don't know where to go. Americans just have this idea that like, oh, the U.S. is the safest thing ever. I don't know where this this mentality comes from. And as soon as you leave, you're gonna die. And it's like that's just not always the case. Like. I've, I've been really stupid in Brazil, like in Rio, especially like walking home, super drunk along the beach from a club straight to my um, straight to my home at like three in the morning. I should have been robbed like multiple times this has happened and nothing's happened to me. Like, I'm not saying it's not safe and people should do it. But I'm saying, like, if I were to do that in Atlanta or San Francisco, especially San Francisco, I don't know if that would have been the case, you know, walking down the main street. So I think like I think the more you travel, the more OK you get with things. I'm pretty risk adverse, but I went to Congo like a month ago and I was terrified. I was on the Eastern province where like, they're having all these wars over the mining, like mining stuff. And I was so scared. Like I almost canceled the day before. And my guide got me not to cancel by saying, oh, you're just like those other Americans who think just cause something's wrong in one part of the country, the whole country's fucked, you know? And I'm like, damn, you're right. Like, I don't want to be that person. So like I did it and it was awesome. It was like one of the best experiences Oh, I'll add that. Like seeing the gorillas in the Congo, like with me and my six bodyguards or whatever in some random national park. One of my best travel experiences ever. And I would have done that if I was like so scared of something bad happening while I'm traveling. You know? Literally. I, my, I have family members who are always like, oh, you're going to the Philippines. Oh, you're going to Brazil. You're going here. Like, yeah. be careful. And I'm like, you, you be careful. <laughs> you be careful, right? Like, the one's not safe for you are either. Like, yeah. Obviously gonna be careful, but my like I don't like walk on the soil here and just go, I can fucking wave money in the air and all my care goes out the right. window. No, no. It's a little right. bit different, but you have to be savvy. Like when I go to Brazil, when I go to Rio specifically, like I'm not gonna be like like leaving this on the beach and like gonna yeah. go swim for an hour, you know, duh. But every different place is so different. So you just have to like know where you're at also like some types of crimes are just more socially acceptable in some countries than others i've noticed like in europe you always have to be aware of pickpockets right like people going in your pocket and stealing something yeah. in the u.s you have to worry about someone shooting up the mall or the concert you're in and it's just become socially acceptable in brazil you have to guard your stuff on the beach you know there's like every That's country has, yeah. has these things where like it's just some types of violence some types of crime are just more common than in other places you know it's interesting so, though because in for like in the Brazil and the Europe examples, like it's just people that are trying to get by, but right. here it's mental. People are crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a very interesting point. Mental illness isn't an issue in other countries as much as it is here. So I would, I would agree with that. 100%. I am most afraid because yeah. if you pickpocket my phone, I'm going to fucking get over it. Okay. It's yeah. Fine. It's not fine. Don't do it. But like, <laughs> another one. You'll manifest another one. Yeah. Yeah, your astrologer will um, tell you to get another one. Um, well, like, I mean, it's like the same thing. And uh, if if there's a tornado in Kansas, that doesn't mean it's unsafe in North Carolina. I think it's like a yeah. very similar concept to where, like, oh yeah, there was a, I don't know, there was a huge uh, robbery in Mexico, so the entire country is like fucked. It's not right. like that at all, right? I, so I think that's like a really good point that both of y'all just made. Um, so we ha we have 11 minutes, 10 and a half minutes until Jasper needs to hop on his next call. So let's try to wrap this up real quick uh, with one last topic, future travel plans. What's on the roadmap for y'all? Um, okay, so I'm in New York, Natalie's in San Francisco, Jasper in your Cape Town, what's next? Yeah, I'm headed to Patagonia in two and a half weeks after I wrap up here, crossing the Atlantic for the third time in the last six weeks. 
Yeah. Even for me, that's a bit mental, you know, that that's a lot. Um, that was, could have been planned a little bit. I It should have been planned, but yeah, it should happen. Um, and then I'm going- <laughs> Shit happens. <laughs> Can we elaborate? No, I'm just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> that's not. <laughs> and then um, after that, I don't know. I could come back here. So it's not like I just had a two week stint. Like I could build something longer, meet, like meet friends now that I know I'll meet again. That would be cool. I could also go back to Rio, even though I'm a little worried about my Brazilian visa days. Um, or I could go like to the Northeast of Brazil and learn, learn kite surfing. Um, so I don't know what's happening for New Year's yet. I'm trying to leave it open and go with the flow, even though that did not work out well for me a couple months ago with this, you know, this flight to Brazil. Um, yeah, let's, let's see how it goes. Still, still, still open to, to ideas. Yeah. About you, Natalie? Tomorrow I go to LA. I am going to a wedding for a friend, and on Sunday, I'm going to Seoul, Korea. Ooh, without me. Jealous. Yeah. Without me? Thanks for the invite. Seoul is one of the places I, like, would happily go there every couple months because I love it there so much. You've been there before. uh, This is my third time. Oh, wow. I have a number, actually. It's like a thing. I need to but I love it there. It's so cheap. The coffee culture there, the food, and like, did you know that Koreans consume the most alcohol in the world per capita? Really? Really? Like down on the weekends. It's crazy. And then Monday, it's like back to work, prim and proper. It's fascinating. That's it's so is cheap. Soul so cheap. Is, is it? it? I, don't, so I thought cheap. it was expensive. I don't remember I don't that. Know. Yeah. Yeah. It, eating there and like doing stuff oh, okay. there, going for beauty, beauty stuff, getting a facial and stuff like that. But like last year, like 15 of us went out to dinner and we got the whole menu three times, uh, Korean barbecue, drank so much beer, so much soju. We all left drunk. It was $17. What? Dude, I had the same experience in New York and it was $300 for the both of us, like for two of us, for Korean barbecue. A dinner with last week, I was like, damn, that was like my whole week eating in Korea. But it's and then I was also week. thinking, this is just another dinner for me. <laughs> oh my God, I do not miss New York at all. Yeah, it's I, I have this love-hate relationship with New York City. Um, and I mean, for me, like over the last six years, as I've told you guys, um, I've been nomading a lot. And then this is like the first time I've really stayed in one place in more than six months um and at least in the u.s and i i just really like new york it's it's a great city it's a lot of energy um very international i have a lot of friends here um there's a lot of great food great like different cultures so for me i i love the city um it's it's the right city for me for right now um it's funny like say, all- Jessica? Are like things that we like we we discussed we liked about nomading like but they're in one city you know in the u.s yeah. like international people there's lots of chaos there's lots of energy there's a lot of interesting people like there's a lot of change going on there all the time yeah um, i i will slam uh new york's nature because like yeah. new, oh, new yorkers like, get so defensive about it every time i say dude, this. don't let them see you say that like, i i don't care me. they they can at me all they want i mean like <laughs> we can cancel can... i for ordering a bagel incorrectly what? We went by TikTok. The New Yorkers were mad. Oh my yeah. god! Um, I I don't know. Like, if I if I want to go to the beach, it's gonna take me an hour. I have to plan my entire day for it. Um, and if I want to go hiking, I have to go like upstate. It's just not convenient. So it's not the same, in my opinion. Um, respectfully. <laughs> uh, okay. So next future roadmap for me. Um. I'm going to leave New York in three days. And guys, you know, this is actually really bittersweet. Like I've, I'm such a nomad, like by heart, but I've decided to stay here and like, just have a, like, what's the word normal life. I don't know if that's the right word, but like I have roommates, my roommates were trying to convince me to stay. Uh, it was like, oh. actually like really bittersweet, uh, made a lot of good friends, um, established a lot of great relationships. Um, and but yeah, I think I'm excited to do this like hybrid model um, in my head, at least, uh, where I'm like nomading a little bit during the winter, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to go back home 
and crash with my parents, my sister for a couple for a couple of weeks. I'll go to Brazil um, to celebrate my birthday and New Year's. Uh, I think I have to come back to the U.S. for work for a bit. Uh, but after that, I plan on going to Taiwan for a month or two. Um, I'm going to work nights, uh, try to spend some time with family. And I'll probably be back in New York. Maybe I'll do like a little hub and spoke model while I'm in Taiwan, like keep Taipei as my home base, go to Bali, maybe go to Vietnam, um, perhaps uh, the Philippines, uh, uh, Malaysia, sorry, I was like blanking on the country. Uh, Malaysia's on my list, perhaps Pakistan, because I have a friend who's, who's there. He was like, hell oh, yeah, like you can stay with my family. So I'm actually considering that too. So, um, locals, yeah. yeah. Wait, so, so I want to meet you in Taiwan. I'm coming. Yeah. No, you're welcome to crash at our place. Uh, our family is going to welcome you with open arms. We love foreigners in Taiwan. So, yeah. Jasper's yeah. coming too. Yeah. Give we'll have a reunion. Me. Yeah. We'll have uh, episode four in person, live from Taipei. <laughs> Like this is why you're never there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, anything else before we break? This was a great episode. One of my favorite episodes. I mean, I said that about every episode, but I, I actually mean it this time. Um, and I can't wait until we start our own podcast. Um, anything y'all like to say before we close? Natalie always has something wise to say. Enlighten us, Natalie. You know what? I have a lot of things to say, but I don't really. I, that's for the next episode. Ooh, I like that. I yeah. Thanks, Wilson, for letting us jump on. I'll say to anybody thinking about doing the nomad thing who's watching these podcasts, um, it's really, it's really doable if you really like love it. You know, like when you're on Instagram and you see these like fitness influencers and they're so muscular and buff and all these other things, it's because they really like live and breathe it and they really love it. And I think for us, like the reason we're able to deal with all these stressors, like because there's stressors for us too, even though we're nomading, like all this chaos, all these things, it's because we really, really, really love it. You know, I feel like a lot of people try nomading for a month or, or something that, oh, this is, this is cute, but it's not really for me. Um, I think it's because it has to be something that you're really like obsessed with to make it work. Um, and I think all three of us, are upset like we needed to live like if i was trained like somewhere in georgia right now where i'm from i would i would go crazy you know? so like it's yeah. it's it's like that so um, I'm sure yeah, there's don't... a lot of people out there who don't know it's for them yet yes give it a shot True. i've seen like so... crazy and people i feel like the others it's to probably not for them and it's okay nomad. um yeah. and it's so funny you said influencers fitness influencers um what, what, what was, was the last thing i said what is you said? I don't. You weren't saying anything. You just started talking all of a sudden, halfway through your sentence or a third way. All right. Say stuff from the beginning. Um. So, it's maybe it's not for everybody. Um. Nomad life, and that's okay. Maybe they just like traveling in general. Maybe some people just don't like traveling, and I have friends who don't like traveling. That's, that's totally cool. That's fair too. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that judgmental <laughs> face from Natalie. <laughs> uh, she's like vomit. <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, you guys do you. If you don't like traveling, watching this. Flag. Red flag. <laughs> That's my type. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. I got to jump I'll... off for my network meeting. All right. I love you guys. Thanks for being on. I'll talk to you later. Enjoy. Bye. Bye. Oh.